getting these ex-athletes to do um, analysts of the game and things of that nature. So I thought it was fascinating when you talk about bringing up the fact that this model, one of the other things I kind of laugh is you hear this from Alabama A&M's coach, Maynard, who talks about they don't pay me to win those games. They pay me to win conference games. That's right. And obviously he hasn't quite hit the pinnacle in his conference games other than what he did in the spring of 2022. Let me put that out there because he won it, the conference championship and the national championship in regards to that. In a lot of ways, that's the focus point. And it's going to be interesting to see um, can North Carolina Central, if South Carolina State doesn't fall, can they still put themselves for that secondary prize, which is the playoffs, uh, which will be interesting if they can finish out the season, you know, kind of in that 9-2 range. Uh, they should at least have an argument uh, in terms of still having that New Hampshire victory uh, on the table, which is significant, and to see what Campbell does a little later um, how can they mitigate that loss in terms of Campbell continue to kind of play well? And they have a big one against North Carolina, which we'll talk about in the fourth quarter. Let me go to you, A.D. Drew. Um, let me give bring up the cigar for you in regards. Now, fam, you didn't play, but Tuskegee Thank played. God they didn't and play. they got a big win, which was a top 10 mid-major matchup. We talked about this a little bit on Wednesday, Joshua, in terms of the you know, HBC nightly about how big this game was. Tuskegee came out of it. So, Cigars to you. Prayer if you did what you're supposed to do to an 0 and 6 Lamar team, beat them to death, um, make them look <laughs> bad, and you yes, how bad they are. No, it's prayer view is good, maybe not great, but they're good. And they did what a good team does to a bad team. Maybe right yes, this for one. Follow up that a little bit before I go and give you a couple of minutes, AD Drew, to talk about the Tuskegee uh, matchup and big win that sets them up for another big game. I love when we go down the stretch and we get these top 10 type matchups or these divisional matchups that have everything on the line. Because when you talk about that, you also had the fact that uh, the SWAC had two non-conference FCS, um, historically white college and universities, win out of the SWAC yesterday. That's yes. for the season, which is a significant move for a conference for over the last 10 years. I didn't get a lot of those moves. Um, the SWAC is 3-1 and one against the Southland, if I'm uh, adding all those wins and losses up. Uh, they have beaten, at this in moment now, they have beaten the first-place team in the MIAC, the first-place team in the OVC, and the first-place team in the Big South. We'll see if it plays out that way, but I think that's significant statements. On the other hand, they have, they have a tough record against the WAC, but outside of that, they've played – and perform pretty well uh, in terms of the non-conference schedule, which is something that hasn't been done in a while for the uh, SWAT conference. Trending in the right direction, that's for sure. But let's get back to A.D. Drew in terms of give some mid-major some love in terms of Tuskegee a little bit. You know, what were your thoughts in terms of coming up Saturday, big, big games? I'm calling it Upset Saturday. Yeah. Upset Saturday took place in terms of the ranking. Um, North Carolina Central, previous rank number two, they go down. Alcorn State, previous rank number seven, they go down to Texas Southern. And we'll get into some of these matchups in the second half, but just kind of setting the stage for what we will talk about the rest of the show. Uh, you saw that. You had Delaware State. They were ranked four in my poll. They went down on the road. Howard homecoming. Uh, we have to take back a little bit of our dumpster juice. Howard says, not so fast. <laughs> uh, maybe later, but right now. Uh, they are the king of the hill of the Mecca Castle in terms of their own throne and protecting the fourth. First yes, game at home, imagine if they uh, kind of get away from their South Carolina State schedule. Another one to think about, another program that does that. First, so homecoming, go, first homecoming win in a long time, too. Yep, good point. We we did discuss that on night, uh, HBCU night, no is. Eddie Drew, your thoughts? Uh. Talk about the bit majors, the Division twos, and the NAIAs. You had, you had Virginia Union, Benedict, Kentucky State, Fayetteville State pretty much came in, took care of business, took care of it early against their opponents. You had a Tuskegee and Albany State who struggled and just and, and basically got out with a dub. And then you've got that one over there, the left out one that we all forget, Langston, who came back against another top 25 opponent 
and went on ahead and secured the victory. The mm, that's big. Was alive that's in big. In the uh, in the uh, in a in a I A race. But Josh, that was a top back. twenty team that they beat two in the NAI Power Rankings. Yes, yeah, I knew, yeah, I knew they were top twenty five. They couldn't remember exactly what I think they, they were like they uh, seventeen. But go yeah. ahead. But but yeah, but Josh, I want to go back to your uh, Delaware State argument for just a brief moment about them getting to the playoffs. The thing that scares me about Delaware State, North Carolina Central, I, North Carolina Central, not Delaware State. Carolina State. I, 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 and, and, Del I'm State sorry. don't have a chance in the world to make it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and I was moving ahead. I was moving ahead of myself because I'm gonna relate this to Delaware State. So mm-hmm. I was moving ahead of myself. North Carolina Central. They've got that one game against Lynchburg that's gonna get thrown out when when people look at it. Absolutely. As far as them getting into the playoffs, and I bring mm-hmm. that up because the common opponent that Dale State had is Virginia Lynchburg. You talk about that Central model. I mean that South Carolina State model. Look at the Dale State model and what that, ha- what that has to do. Inconsistent. You've got a Division two. You've got a NCCAA in Lynchburg. You've got you've played Robert Boys and beat Robert Boys, who was one of the lowest ranked teams in FCS. So when you, you when you go up against a person like a Delaware, you know you you, you get thrashed. Bareback, you get thrashed. You come out, you beat Norfolk, who unfortunately may be at the bottom of the BAC conference to give you to give yourself what you think is a conference, and then you get the inconsistency and go into Howard on the games you really should win. You you on paper you have the better team. Not only do you lose, but you lose to their own homecoming, and they dominated this game. Mm-hmm. You Start to finish. On, you didn't lose on the last second field goal or a hail berry. You lost from the moment that ball was kicked off. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you talk about that South Carolina State model. The anti-South Carolina State is Delaware State, who's been fool's gold for everybody this year. And Drew, just real quick, man, to that point, right? Like you look at if you look at North Carolina Central and you're looking for a model as to how to be able to get an at-large bid, you look at that fam you model last year. Both FAMU and North Carolina Central were, were are below 90 in strength of schedule. Those strength of schedule is not included. For those who are watching the show, strength of schedule is not included in the selection committee's criteria for when they're choosing an at-large bid. They That's do right. not consider strength of schedule. They look at how you perform against the uh, programs that you played against, what's your final record, and where you finish that in the conference. If you're one loss in conference instead of the team that won the conference, then great, you're in a great position. That was FAMU's situation last year. FAMU lost to Jackson State. Jackson State goes to the Celebration Bowl, which is a non-selection uh, committee uh, concept as it pertains to when they're choosing schools. So when you look at that, we have a win against the team who was the who's top for first in the Big South, which is North Carolina a We have a loss against the team that the other team that's top for first in the Big South, which is Campbell. But we have a win against a team who beat Elon yesterday. It is a head in the conference of the CAA. That is going to be a huge, huge difference. When you look at FAMU's model last year, FAMU had a great stretch of wins. They didn't lose another game after they lost to Jackson State. For us, it's going to be the fact that we won a really, really big game at the beginning of the season, and they're going to have to take that into context because New Hampshire is going to be in the top 19 this week in the polls, and we have a W against them. And if we run the table, significant wins against the rest of our schedule, we should be able to get in. But to that great point, A.D. Drew, the antithesis, of the South Carolina State model, the complete antonym of the South Carolina State model is the, Dale is State. the Delaware State model. Hey, two, right. two quick things let's before get we in. get out. Let's, uh, let's, let's get into this uh, break uh, so we get in there. But both of your points are right on it. I also tell people be careful. Part of the formula for the FCS playoffs, and you see this real clear in terms of Division Two playoffs, the way they set it up, is you also have to look at what other teams are doing. And so we always talk about A&T what team fans right and now. where they are. So you also got to find out, you know, who's playing themselves out uh, because of late losses in the season, which may help a team, which obviously, in my opinion, helped fam you a lot last year is what other teams did and not mm-hmm. in terms of that closing weekend when they made their final state. Last thing here is going back to what you said about Langston, um, Ottawa was 17, as I talked wow. about. And this is according to the BS 
uh, rankings here at the NIA. Uh, Langston was 30, and they have a loss to number 11, Texas Wesley. So they're right in that mix uh, of trying to put themselves in players. They got to close out strong, uh, but we'll keep our eyes on that. And you certainly can check out uh, Brian and AD as they do sports rap, where they do really good work in terms of the NCAA Division II and NAI playoffs. And then on Tuesday and Wednesday, particularly on Wednesday with Joshua Sims on HBC Nightly, you can really get some update information in regards to what they're doing. We're going to get into our first break. We'll come back on the other side. We'll get a chance to really get into some matchups that we told you to keep your eyes on during the week, uh, as we call them here, games of the week. We'll do the mid-major first. We'll get into some major division in the third stretch of the show, and we'll come back and tell you what to get into next week because it just gets bigger and bigger as you close up the season and get in those championship runs. We got some big games coming up this week. We thought they were big this week, and they were, but now they get bigger. Stickers will be right back after this first break to get into the second quarter, our second segment. It gets better. Stick with us. Thank you. Support the Black College Sports Network so we can continue to provide you coverage. Go to myjbn.com slash support and be a part of the Black College Sports Network. Tell everybody they can follow their dreams. Let's get back to getting ticks instead of watching flicks. Before we can safely get out there, we need the facts on COVID-19 vaccines. Visit getvaccineanswers.org so you can make an informed decision for yourself and for your crew. Charmin Ultra Soft has so much cushiony softness, it's hard for your family to remember. They can use less. Sweet pillows of softness. This is soft. Holy Charmin. Oh, excuse me. Roll it back, everybody. Sorry. Charmin Ultra Soft is so cushiony soft, you'll want more. But it's so absorbent, you can use less. So it's always worth it. Now, what did we learn about using less? You gotta roll everybody <laughs> we all go why not enjoy the go with Charmin Maureen is saving big holiday shopping at Amazon so now she's free to become Maureen the Marrier food is her love language and she really loves her grandson like really loves since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. <laughs> Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot left, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, Boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot left, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir, and pay attention, Boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Bill inside the HBC Sports Lab. We'll get into our mid-matchup. We kind of teased this up, and I said it didn't match up with the mid-major, if you would. Uh, Blankston, Oklahoma, W.E. Anderson Stadium, SI, uh, when you get in that Sooner Athletic Conference, Saturday, October 23 o'clock p.m., they got it done. Number four, Langston, Lions, 6-1, 5 and one. defeat Ottawa, Firestorm, 5-2, five 5-2 and two, five and two in terms of their overall record and conference record. In overtime, it was a thorough comeback victory uh, as they were laying on the ropes. The Lions refused to give it up. They win 44-38. It's a big win, top 20 win, as I told you. Uh, the fact that they all tied now, three teams are tied, well, two teams now are tied in the conference record, Right. And it puts them in that momentum and shakes off what happened last year when they went on that slide. So I want to go to you, Drew, and just give me some thoughts, some key players in that matchup. What do you think about Langston at number four in the mid-major poll getting it done this week? 
And it looks like defense was at a uh, premium in this one. Well, <laughs> I don't know if premium is the word, but 950 yards combined by these two teams. It's kind, of, it's kind of interesting that you get a game that's won in overtime and somebody has to play defense and get a stop in a game where no one seemed to be able to play defense and get a stop. Uh, Larry Harrington uh, on the day. 24 41, 387 yards. Four Getting it done. Getting one, it one, done. One, one INT had a long of uh, 65. So the, the Langston, consistency. They, they, they got that one bump in the road. They've got to stay consistent throughout the remainder of the year. They cannot afford any type of mental mistakes going down the stretch. Good point. Good point. Josh, any thoughts on that? Yeah, man. I mean, we, we talked a little bit about it too this week, Doc. Um, we talked about it on nightly and we talked about it again on Thursday night um, on Inside the Sport, uh, HBCU Sport Lab. Like, you know, this Langston team, you know, they're in a t- they're in a really, really big stretch of their season right now. If they're gonna make a sh- if they're gonna make a run, you know, after the loss two weeks ago, if they're gonna make a run for the playoffs, uh, it started yesterday. You know, they needed to win yesterday. You get a top 20 uh a, a win against a top 20 opponent yesterday. And that Langston offense, man, all season long, man, we've seen that Langston offense kind of just click itself away, man. They had maybe one hiccup this season so far. And as I'm continuing to learn more about this Langston football team and learn more about what's going on out there in Oklahoma and how they got that team rolling, I'm very excited to see how the season kind of finishes up for Langston, man. So, uh, I, you know, as much as I'm, as much as I'm learning, I'm liking, <laughs> as I'm learning, I'm liking what I'm seeing, man. That offense is incredible. A little bit about Bluefield State. They took a big loss this weekend. Obviously, coaches on the show, and they were playing some good football. Thought they would perform much better, but uh, surprising for a lot of folks, credit to Allen Yellowjackets of the SIC versus the Independent of Bluefield State. They get their first victory of the season. They go from one and six, one and five, uh, as they move forward. They defeat Bluefield State, Big Blue, who dropped to three and three. So um, they are 50 a were defeated, I should say, 50 to 14. What are your thoughts in terms of that game? They really got going, Allen, in that first quarter. Yeah, uh, yeah, Doc. Honestly, man, you know, from start to finish yesterday in that game, and it, that's another kind of kudos to the state of South Carolina yesterday, going undefeated in HBCU football yesterday. Uh, Allen getting this big, big W yesterday. Man, the passing game was big. Um, and when we had Coach on, on HBCU Nightly on Wednesday, he talked about really trying to limit that Allen offense and seeing what they could be able to do. Well, uh, not so fast, my friend. Yesterday was a, <laughs> <laughs> yesterday was a little ugly. Uh, you know, down in Blythewood, South Carolina, yesterday for that game, man. They were right in South Carolina yesterday for that game. So, man, it just it just was incredible, man. Dante Cook, man, uh, uh, had a great game yesterday. Daniel Plummer, man, the quarterback for the blue uh, for uh, Allen University, man, balled out yesterday, man. Over two hundred yards passing yesterday and in the first half. So literally, man, you look at what he's what they've been able to do down there, Allen. Man, I'm I'm excited to see how they finish. Allen is still a couple years away from really being able to dom- to really be able to compete. But Bluefield, mm-hmm. man, you know, what can you say, man? They, that defense just did not hold any water yesterday, uh, and Allen had their way yesterday against him, man. So good win by Allen, but whoo, Bluefield, man, Dude, you, you, you got another jump home game. in there and say anything about that matchup, good stuff, Josh, uh, what? or do you want to jump into the CIAA matchup? I'm going to just give a quick one. Was it the, was it the Allen defense or the Allen offense that let them back? I'm excuse me, not the Allen. Bluefield defense or the Bluefield offense? You know, you talk about the defense not being able to do something. When your offense throws five interceptions, Jesus. that's not a formula for victory for <laughs> both, both teams. And your minus three in the, uh, in the turnover column. I mean, I, I'm just being real. How much no, can you that, put on the defense versus, no, that's the, versus the NF offense? That's a significant <laughs> point. It's hard to blame everything on your defense when your offense uh, decides not to come to play. Let's get into this CIAA. We'll start with you, Joshua, and then come to you, A.D. Drew. Uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, George William Athletic Complex, Winston-Salem State, Rams, one and five, uh, as, as they got into the St. Augustine matchup. What were your thoughts in terms of what, down, what went down in that game? 
Well, I know my brother Stephen Gaither is going to love what I'm getting ready to say here. Uh, but I did. I called this one, man. I, I thought that uh, with some State, Coach Massey had that squad ready to go, man. I called this one. I felt like that. I felt like uh, State was going to be able to kind of, you know, continue their route in the in the capital city of North Carolina and Raleigh, man. And, you know, they're 2-0 against both both Raleigh CIAA teams. They beat Shaw the week before. They beat St. Aug this week. Next week, they got a chance to keep this thing rolling and really finish the season well. Uh, they got Fayetteville State in two weeks, man. So, uh, yesterday, the offense, uh, just 30 seconds about this, Doc. Their offense looked more consistent yesterday than I've seen them look all season long. Uh, I was very, very impressed with what I saw from the kid Perkins at offense. And the offense just looked good yesterday, man. OC called a really good game yesterday. So I look forward to them being able to take this momentum into John C. Smith next week. They got John C. Smith next week, who was reeling after a homecoming loss yesterday. Uh, so I'm looking forward to State being able to kind of finish the season strong, man. S- salute to Coach Massey. We didn't get a lot of W, we didn't get a lot of NCCU wins yesterday, but you know, the nickname for West Southern State is North Carolina Central West. So, you know, Coach Massey is a North Carolina Central <laughs> grad. The AD is a North Carolina Central grad. So whenever they win, we win. So we, we take that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So the Rams approved the two and five. Two and three in St. Augustine Falls to one and seven and one and five. When you talk about what they look like on the schedule, Drew, uh, sometimes you play teams, they help you get right. That's two in a row for the Rams. Yeah, uh, but I'm going to find interesting. I wonder if that game that they will not play for homecoming, I wonder if that would have had a yeah. – uh, mm-hmm. an influence on it because they do That's have right. Fayetteville State for the last game of the season. Just just, just a curious, because if Fayetteville slips up between now and the and that last game, that game could have could have meant something. Gonna be interesting. <laughs> so that, for the sake of argument, let's hope Fayetteville State does not slip up and have us pundits talking about what if they would have uh played that game. I like mm. that. Let's go into Tuskegee Gold uh Tigers in terms of them. Number seven coming into the game, they improved to six and two, five and zero oh in the West Division as they defeat number ten Lane Dragons. They fall to three and four, two and two, thirty-five to thirty-one. In terms of the scores, competitive matchup, but Tuskegee continues to find a way to get wins under uh, the new coach. There, um, it's amazing what a coach can do to the program because uh, I'm not sure they're as talented as their record. Is in terms of that, but they certainly play at a level that justifies the record they have. So sticking with you, AD Drew, what are your thoughts? You know, it's interesting. Coach Ruffin has been known as a defensive coach his entire career. <laughs> yeah, but the Tuskegee Golden Tigers for the last five weeks have put up 30 or more points uh, yeah. during this six, in five of this five of the six games in the street. Here's the problem, though. They give it up. 30 points a game also doing this doing this three. So it's uh it, it's real interesting for a coach that's been known for you know 13 to 10 victories and things like that to be winning games in a shootout. And I'm I'm gonna let it go to uh Joshua after that, but I do want to come back and mention something about the playoffs after Joshua gets in his uh point. Go ahead. Yeah, man, uh, salute to Coach Ruffin, man. This is him just finding a way to continue to keep winning, man. I thought that, you know, I thought that yesterday was possibly a, a situation where, you know, I'll be talking about a lane, a lane uh, program who, had, who has a FCS a W on their hands, you know, a major W on their hands against Tennessee State. But, man, salute to Coach and that staff, man. They find a way to win, man. They've been finding a way to win every week for the last five weeks. I – you know, that sets up for a really big game next week, man. That is a huge, huge game next week for the Tuskegee, It's for the man. West. It's for the West, literally, man. It's for the West. So, to see the SIAC really, I mean, really kind of come together, and you're talking about as the season gets later, it gets greater for the SIAC, man. These matchups in these last three weeks in the SIAC, man, these next three weeks is going to be incredible as well. But the last two weeks, I'm spoiled, man. I'm spoiled the last two weeks, man, just kind of seeing the matchups the last two weeks. Before we get into our uh, March and Sport halftime break, uh, come back on the third side. Let me let A.D. Drew get in here and talk a little bit about the playoff and get people prepared to understand what may go down as we close out the season. Remember, D2 closes out a week earlier than what you used to that last week playing last couple of weeks in some areas of the FCS. 
Go ahead, Drew. And, and here's the thing, Doc. All the conference races may be closed a week earlier than that because next week we can have all division races sold up in, in all mm-hmm. of our conference. Uh, Virginia Union wins next week, CIAA North is sold up. Fayetteville State wins next week, CIAA South sold up. Benedict wins next week, SIAC East is sold up. Tuskegee wins next week, SIAC West is showed up. Kentucky State nice. beats Tus- Kentucky State beats Tuskegee. We do have to wait one uh, an additional week to make it official for Kentucky State. Is uh, Kentucky State we need one, one more victory? But here's the thing I wanted to mention about the uh, Super Region too. Doc, I'm taking a look at the projections. The rankings should come out later on today. But in Super Region two, Doc, we have six of the top fifteen in Super Region two are HBCUs. Right now, that's projected Benedict at number two, Virginia Union at number four, Fort Valley State, six, Albany State, seven, Tuskegee, nine, Fayetteville State, 10. Those teams have realistic shots to getting into the playoffs, depending on how they do, and they all control their own destiny. So even though the division races and conference races may be sold up, these teams will have something to play for in week 10 and week 11 as they try to get into the playoffs and play for seeding. Five teams still in the mix, top 10 in that region. That's beautiful. Six. That's six. six. I'm sorry, six. Is six in the top 10. Six of the top 10. Think about oh, that. HBCU. That's HBCU. Beautiful. Beautiful thing. We oh. told you some good football was playing at the Division two level between the CIAA and SIAC. That's just an example of looking at the data points to tell you we know what we're saying there. Shout out to some folks, Noel Price, Jay, Jay Mack, Kerry Mickens, Mary Allen, Michael Lee, Ricky Burton, G. Boom Holly, Theron Waters, all giving us some love, jumping in here early this morning. Jimmy Wilson, Sarah Beverly, appreciate y'all getting up and getting your dose of the lab. Emma Price, Anthony Langston, Carter Kelvin, who else is in here doing it right this morning? Amos Bassett, see you. Uh, Carter, Kelvin. Who else? Anybody else in here before we take this break and get into halftime? I'll shout some of y'all out on the other side. Tav- Travis Tyrone Banks, John Richardson, Sarah Beverly, as we said, Reginald Johnson, Karen Griffin. Chuck Hunt is always in the house. Thomas Einstein Maddox. Good job, man. We appreciate y'all getting in here, mixing up. Telling us what you think, Willie Bolden. I see you. I see you. Lennon Blau is in here. Chris Tucker. Daniel Wiley. Man, y'all deep this morning. I see you. All right, Jerome G. Sutton, Barry Williams. He got had a homecoming. He found a way to get in here. I see what you're doing. <laughs> Appreciate you. Appreciate you getting on up. Herbert Bolden. Uh, Clarence Kenny. With that, we'll take our halftime break. We'll be right back on the side. We'll get into the major division where we talked a little, teased a little bit, but we got some good games. Those independent programs getting wins in their conferences. We'll see what that means as they go down the stretch to make it interesting and see if they can come up on the champion side of things. Stickers will be right back on the other side looking at the Miak and Swag as well. Your ad could be ran here. MyJBN.com backslash support. MyJBN.com backslash support for more information. Free driving offers the most advanced and luxurious pickup in its class. Yeah, it runs. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge, featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website www.slowburnwaco.com That's www.slowburnwaco.com Supermarket Sushi, really? 
No. Wait, Troy, you work here? I'm never not working. Like head and shoulder scalp shield technology, up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. Never not working, huh? Oh, Troy, you're such a good teacher. Yeah, I know. <laughs> never not working. Never not working. Never ever not working. Are you serious? Never not working. Standard protection that's never not working. Head and shoulder scalp shield technology. <laughs> It's like a loot machine. Going around town, trying to get it down. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah, and root about, root about. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, cause he gon' teach a lesson. You did, wouldn't want to go to the playoffs if it wasn't going to be financially good for Jackson State. Right. If it changes to where you guys could have some home games and it would be financially more to go do the playoff, would you rather go do that? Uh, I'd rather, if we have the opportunity, I'd rather play in a celebration ball. I'd rather do that. In Atlanta, at the celebration ball, Miak versus Swag. Champion versus champion. Only one team will rise above the rest and claim the coveted Celebration Bowl trophy. Come join the celebration at Mercedes Benz Stadium this December. Dr. Mills inside HBC Sports Lab, you heard it. I'd rather go to Celebration Bowl. It's about the Celebration Bowl when you talk about the MIAC and SWAC. In terms of champion against the champion. And we'll get into that for the MIAC and the SWAC. But let's talk about some of these independent programs who desire is to win the conference, obviously, which means you get a bid to the playoffs. Starting with Tennessee State. Yes, they started off 0-4, but they rolling now three straight and even had the bottom uh, of the pit when they thought they lost the lane. But they've risen. Uh, and now they've gotten two conference wins. Uh, doing what they're supposed to do with teams that are not playing well, but they are playing better, getting a chance to maybe to set up for a showdown, not next week uh, when they play Murray State that's 0-6-0-7, but the following week it gets interesting. But they got it done as they defeated Eastern Illinois 37-17, so the Tigers improved to 3-4, 2-0 in OVC. Eastern Illinois, the Panthers, fall to 2-5 and 1-2 and and in the OVC. A.D. Drew? Any thoughts on this matchup? Dominate performance by Tennessee State as they literally doubled up uh, Eastern Illinois there on this Saturday. And maybe that lane game was a wake-up call to them and made them refocus uh, going into conference play. I like that. And they got healthier, Josh. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, they are definitely back he healthy. Uh, Draylon Edwards is back. Draylon Edwards is back being consistent. Um, you know, that quarterback position has now been shored up because he's back healthy. On the running game is back hill, uh, back short up because he's healthy because they their starting running back is healthy as well. So expect them to play big next week against Murray State and make it interesting in the OVC, man. Uh, <laughs> if we get Tennessee State in there, man, woo, that'd be big, man. To have a HB, another HBC in the FCS playoffs. You know they play A and T in the first round if it happens. I just want to throw that out there. They're gonna get rid of y'all. Jeez, man. <laughs> Speaking of A&T, Joshua, I know you can't say the school down the top, but we can't. North Carolina A&T, that's number 10, North Carolina A&T State Aggies. They improved to 4-3, and 2-0. Uh, do what you're supposed to do to a winless Robert Morris Colonials that fall to 0-7, and, and that's 0-3 in the conference race. They defeat them, really beat up all of them throughout the game and got jumped on them early, 38-14. to They basically show up a big game next week against Campbell, which we'll talk about a little later in the show. In the SWAT type of matchup, they got it done there. But what are your thoughts in terms of the Aggies uh, getting it done against Robert Morris? Yeah, Doc. Uh, yeah, yeah, Doc. The school down the highway looked consistent yesterday, man. Um, for everybody who who knows, I can never say those two letters in the acronym <laughs> in between that little symbol in between. Um, but um, listen, man, <laughs> the school down the highway looked good yesterday. Uh, good win against a, a Robert Morris team. That's what you're supposed to do. You're killing that with a sledgehammer, killing Ant with an axe, and they did that yesterday. It absolutely sets up for a big game this week versus Campbell for the school down the highway. And they little homecoming. They got their little homecoming festivities in East Greensboro this week, too. 
I like it. Let's go to you, AD Drew. Your thoughts? You really want me to break down a game where a t beat Robert Morris, who lost to Delaware State, the same Delaware State that lost to Howard. <laughs> <laughs> I just no, want you, like, you just you just I, you, you want me to waste time on that anymore. You just said enough. I like that. <laughs> okay, let's go All back right. to Joshua. We talked about this. The break is you succeeding some of your time to Joshua because he wanted to go in a little bit. Uh, from a coaching perspective to really get you inside understanding a little more of what took place in this matchup other than, obviously, South Carolina State Bulldogs getting it done and improved the 3-4, and 1-0 and in the MEAC, defeating number two North Carolina Central Eagles 5-2 and two as they fall uh, to 1-1 one one in the conference 26-24. Take it away, Josh. Absolutely. So, um, so – when you look at games like this, man, this was a consummate ball game. This was an old school kind of ball game where we're going to punch you in the mouth. We're going to see if you can punch us back in the mouth and, and see what happens, man. In the first quarter yesterday, you saw uh, North Carolina Central defense uh, really kind of shore up and really stop the run, man. You look at the, the box score yesterday. We really stopped the run throughout the entire game. Um, and really had a chance in the first quarter to really go and jump out and do what we need to do. But offensively yesterday, North Carolina Central in the first quarter came out a little stagnant. As you get to the second quarter, you start to see our offense kind of start to move a little bit, but you start to see South Carolina State's offense move a little bit as well. Um, you know, and they fired up number one Shaq Davis yesterday in the, in the second quarter. They fired him up um, yesterday. And I'm, and I'm going to say this, man, this kid is incredible. Um, we're talking about, I mean, literally, man, he's a red shirt sophomore. If there are not any NFL scouts, and Doc, I know you don't watch the games on Sunday, but if there aren't any NFL scouts, who are making their way down to Orangeburg, South Carolina, let this be a warning and an opportunity for me to tell you. You need to make your way down to Orangeburg, South Carolina, and go get eyes on this kid. He is incredible. All of their touchdowns yesterday versus North Carolina Central in our defense came by way of Shaq Davis. Whether it was intentional or unintentional, whether it was because we wanted him to shine or he just wanted to shine on himself, one of the touchdowns he had, they pulled, <laughs> they called one of his touchdowns back. He broke for 60 some yards yesterday, and they called that one back. But a couple data points yesterday. Our D, our offense, our offensive rushing game yesterday. We're known for our, our kind of our balance. Davis Richie yesterday, two passing touchdowns, one rushing to uh one uh two passing touchdowns, one interception yesterday. But our running game was what was big yesterday. And on the last real drive, what I consider to be the last real drive of the game, once you, you know, your back is against the wall, you inside the 20, and you're trying to drive to go get in the field goal position. I don't consider that the last real drive. In the last real drive of the game, we drove 80 plus yards. All of our plays, except for one, was a running play. The one play we decided to throw the ball, we throw an interception. Kudos to South Carolina State for making a play yesterday. But just my only coaching point yesterday is, and for other teams that's got to play against Shaq Davis, go cloud against this guy, man. Put somebody mm. underneath. Let's let these let those backers play in uh in in uh in inside of space, and then let your safety over the top really be able to play. You can play a combo coverage, split the field in half. You can go man on the other side because it's not like the other receivers. No disrespect to the other receivers, but they ain't they ain't number one. They ain't they're not Shaq. They not they Shaq. And you have to realize that. Cut the field in half, wherever he's at, or put your best defender on him, and let's play off man and let him beat you in, in hitch routes or something, man. But deep balls, there's no reason in the world for you to be getting beat on post routes, deep balls, uh, uh, jump balls, fades. There's no reason in the world you let Shaq Davis beat you with fades. And this is another team. My alma mater is another team that fell victim to Shaq Davis just being a man amongst boys. And that's all I got about it, Doc. Oh, oh man, that, that one, was broke down sweet. One, one follow up on that to uh, make your point even better, Joshua. Uh, South Carolina State had 21 receptions. Shaq Davis had six. Kendrick Flowers out the backfield had four. So that's ha that's half they dog on reception. So don't, like you say, double Shaq, put a man, put a man following uh Kendrick out the backfield, and let everybody else beat you. Yeah, beat me with somebody else. Right, and I know it's not over, but just to talk about matchups, we would have got excited with a North Carolina Central matchup because you're talking about if they would have won this, they would have came in that game, celebration bowl, potentially eight and three, nine and two. Um, so they wouldn't play well in terms of what they could get done against Jackson State if they can roll it out. Uh, but now you put into play South Carolina State, Shaq Davis. How about this against Travis Hunter? 
in terms of what that matchup may look like. Freshmen against <laughs> <laughs> uh, in terms of it. a lot of be playing, I know Southern's out there saying, "Hey, man, we got a matchup this weekend. Slow down. It's a championship game. You got Prairie out there saying, watch out. You got FAMU sneaking in the back door. Alabama a and only has one loss, and they still have Jack State on the schedule. So a lot to be played, but I'm just saying that you get in and get excited. There's going to be some matchups to keep your eyes on in celebration, bro. And that's <laughs> if South Carolina State doesn't find a way to um, – Choke it up, if you would, and lose two games. The Central State is back in the mix. It only takes one to make it become close down the stretch. Yeah, just four more games. Not a lot of room for error. It would be interesting. Uh, talking about that a little bit, we'll stretch this out, and then we'll come back and tell you some games to watch out. Obviously, you've heard about what I call upset Saturday. That was Howard uh, getting it done at home coming against Delaware State. Really um, taking care of that game from the last week. They scored on the first drive pull away from Delaware State and get it done in so many different ways. So that was uh, fascinating when you talk about what happened there in terms of that matchup uh, in that game, how it wins 35-17. You also have the upset we just talked about in terms of South Carolina State over Delaware State. And then I wanted to give some credit to um, Texas Southern. Second Mm. homecoming victory they got done uh, against Alcorn State. The Braves, talking about already, they defeat them 34-27. Um, the Braves scored late uh, as they actually had a 14-point lead in the fourth quarter uh, where they end up trying to do an onside kick after they scored late, but it was all but done. And credit to the Tigers that are rolling and saying, hey, we got four teams in the mix for the Western Division in terms of what this looked like going down the stretch. So that's some games to keep your eyes on. I did want to talk about Jackson State getting it done. Number one team, Jackson State Tigers, 7-0, 4-0, defeat Campbell Campbells. Uh, four and three as they fall to two and one as they have a big matchup next week. That was a 22 to 14. Jackson State scores late in the game. It looked like they pull away. Campbell takes it all the way down, scores uh, with uh, less than minutes on the clock. You have an onside kick that didn't go their way. That was really the end of the game. Um, it was interesting that game because you look at the stats and Jackson State dominated in that game, but th- they've had this capacity over this year to really um, not be able to get it done in terms of the red zone scoring. They get down in the 10, and they've done everything, interceptions, fumbles, uh, turnover on downs. And this is another one of those games. So that's a trend that's going to be fascinating to see. They're so talented that it hasn't hurt them in terms of winning games, just involved with their defense is. So I wanted to share a little bit about that in terms of getting some of those facts out there. Last one, Bethune-Cookman Wildcat gets off the mat 2-5, two 2-2, and, two and, two, and they go to Mississippi Valley State. We talked about how challenging it is, um, and it was like that. I was like, Valley scored on the first touchdown going away, and it looks like they were going to get that proverbial 14 points that we talked about it so hard down there. <laughs> and then 97-yard pick six. Puts Bethune, took them back in the gate, and then in the second half, it explodes for points. It's 45 <laughs> to 35. You're like, what happened? Did, did you see the back to back kickoff returns, Doc? Yes, back to back kickoff returns. So the one for 91, down, one for 94. We told everybody, look at, the de- <laughs> look at the Delta. It goes down there, and strange things happen, and it happened. Unfortunately for Delta Devils, they could not get the win. They fall to 0 7, 0 5. Uh, but they keep pushing forward in that matchup. Let's get into our last break. We'll come back on the other side and start talking about some of the games that you want to think about this weekend. Obviously told you one or two of them throughout the show. We'll make it official and get these two guys' thoughts on what is taking place next weekend. And week number nine, boy, it is moving past. We're past midterms, and we're starting to get in the final exam time. What is happening to the football season? Stick with us. We'll be right back on the other side giving you some highlights in terms of what to think about this week as it just gets tremendously uh, exciting in terms of what happens down the stretch in these conference races. Stickers, we'll be right back after this break. Thank you guys for what you do for HBCU Athletics. This is a fantastic avenue for, for, for all of us. This is our ESPN, so we, 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 we love what you guys do. Brian, AD, Roy, all you guys at BCSN, we really appreciate what it is that you guys, you guys do for us. Don't worry, my 
we'll be there soon. We? Is this the one? Well, let's say I found the one who takes me to another level. Always stays calm under pressure. Most importantly, the one that helps me discover the coolest places. This sounds wonderful. Come outside, I'll introduce you. They're here. Definitely the one. <laughs> Introducing the all-new Nissan Frontier. At CDW, we get speed as the new currency of success. Our team spends way too much time tending to outdated applications and software when they should be focused on driving application agility and innovation. CDW Amplify Development Services modernizes software and application development to help accelerate innovation and digital transformation. So you mean building new applications, UI, and mobile interfaces? Well, you said you needed to innovate more quickly. Oh, so he's a listener. To do more at scale, trust CDW Amplify Development Services. It's like a loot machine. Going around town, trying to get down. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they're going to tell you if your team, if they want a lot of and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir yes, and pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Bill inside the HBC Sports Lab with Joshua Sims and A.D. Drew. I started to say Mike Washington, Charles Bishop, they're out on assignment or recovering uh, at least one of them from homecoming. The other one is probably prepping for his homecoming to come because if you know anything about Mike, he starts early. So <laughs> no telling what's going on. And then B.J. Jones, he was down on the bluff or at least he tried to say it wasn't him, it was somebody else. He was recovering <laughs> as well. So we're going to leave that alone. We'll let him explain that on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> here he goes to his top five tools to get ready for his Twitter spaces as he does. And Joshua is getting it done, uh, coming and facing the music. So I appreciate that in terms of how you get it. We're going to get into some top matchups this weekend. Uh, it gets good in week number nine. Let's start in the MEAC. What is your top matchup in the MEAC this week, Joshua Sims? Man, it's, it's a tie. Uh, you know, North Carolina Central – we have to go on the road to Dover, Delaware. Um, both of us reeling after our loss. Both of us was in the top five, you know, you know, after having impressive wins the week prior to. Um, so it, that game, and then I'm going to be honest, Doc, that South Carolina State-Morgan State game. Um, Morgan State has some big DBs. Uh, you know, will they be able to put together a strategy to stop? Because if you can stop the run against South Carolina State, you can be able to kind of make them one-dimensional. So, that Morgan State South Carolina State game is equally as important to me as North Carolina Central Dale State game. And just one quick point: because we only lost by two yesterday to South Carolina State, if they lose to anybody else in the conference, we get the opportunity to go to Celebration Bowl. Just as long as we beat, if they lose to Morgan State next week, we get a chance to go back to the Celebration Bowl because we beat Morgan State by thirty plus points. So. That's going to be an opportunity. I look forward to it. I hope that that's how it goes down. But if not, you know, it is what it is. Don't you have the head-to-head -head tiebreaker first? We do. So we have the head-to-head -head tiebreaker. So the only way we'll have a head-to-head -head tiebreaker is the Morgan State game. We lost by two to them. They lost to a and We beat a and You're talking about you know, a so way. in a three-way. In a three-way. No, and you're talking is, the three-way. I got yeah. you. Oh, yeah. yeah. I forgot about the three-way tiebreaker. I was thinking about two. Ah. Yeah. Nice, nice thing. Hey, thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Stretch it all the way out. Stretch it all the way. Stretch out. the whole. What, way. We need. Wouldn't that, would that be so meackish? Wouldn't that be so meackish, though? Man, so yeah. meackish, man. AD, <laughs> any any thoughts? Any game that you want to keep your eyes on in terms of the meack? I mean, I'm looking for SC State, Morgan State. You know, I really expect Central to take care of business. Uh, the Howard Norfolk State is, is a throwaway game. You can you contractually obligated to let those two teams play. Let them go ahead and play. <laughs> <laughs> Contractual <laughs> obligation. <laughs> but, well, the big yeah. one in the SWAC, everybody's <laughs> going to be tuning to obviously mm. Southern and Jackson State. This is interesting to me. And yes, while Jackson State is seven and zero, five and two in regards overall records, 
Um, Southern is three and one. Obviously, you see how tight the race is in the West with PVB in the three and one. Southern has the head to head tiebreaker there. But Texas Southern is three and two. They've beaten Southern, but they've lost to Prairie View. And they beat beaten Alcorn that sits at two and two. Uh, Alcorn has lost to Southern and now lost to Texas Southern. They do have Prairie View coming up in a couple of weeks. So it's fascinating there. On the other side in the East, you have Jackson State 4 0, Family 3 and 1, Alabama AM 3 and 1 that are all in the race. And technically, you might look a little bit at Alabama State for Bill Cooking with two losses. Uh, big gap there, but certainly between those top three. Um, and you had Jackson State to beat Fam. You obviously, AM and Jackson State have not played, so that's one to keep your eyes on. But if you start thinking about championship games, this game is important, obviously, to keep moving and putting yourself in positions to be in the championship game. But if it falls right in such a way and Southern defeats Jackson State, mm. Mm. Right, that means if those two teams come out of the division, they have the same record, the championship game would be in Baton Rouge on mm. the bluff mm -hmm. because they would have the head-to-head -head tiebreaker. Think about that for a minute in craziness. Jackson State wants to continue to win so they can host another championship game. But you just have state bragging rights uh, in terms of what this looks like. And so it's fascinating. But I thought I'd tease that out there as we start to looking forward. Could you imagine uh, how much is on the table of getting it done? And Southern doesn't have any room for error since they already have that one loss. Any thoughts from you, Joshua, on this matchup? Yeah, the conversation has already started, Doc, about uh, <laughs> this game – possibly being the game that will derail the train that is Jackson State, man. I'm hearing that mm. there's going to be a bigger crowd in Mississippi Veteran Memorial Stadium this Saturday coming than it was yesterday for homecoming. And so you mix that with the, the fireworks that is Southern versus Jackson State anyway, and a little bit of inconsistency on the offensive side of the ball yesterday for Jackson State. First time we've seen it all season. A Southern defense that, you know, they struggled a little bit early, you know, to dominate Virginia Lynchburg yesterday. You got that coming into Mississippi, Mississippi Veteran Memorial Stadium next week. Doc, this is prime time football. No pun intended to Coach Prime, but this is marquee matchup that we have been waiting for all season long. We hope that it would be like this. We, you know, honestly would have hoped that Southern wouldn't have had that stumble against Texas Southern because this game would have been even bigger. But if we're looking at this, Doc, this is going to be a matchup between those two defenses and a slugfest that we haven't seen in the SWAC all season long. This is going to be a punch and then get punched back. Let's see what happens. And whatever offense, in my opinion, has the ball last, that's who I think ends up winning this game, Doc. Good one, good one. Drew, any thoughts you want to share on this matchup? I guess everybody just forgot that this is the Boombox Classic, you know, the hell with the bands for, uh, for this matchup. <laughs> You know, I thought I at least thought you was gonna get to put that out there, Doc, considering that you were the bad poll. You know, <laughs> forget to get back up on the football field. This is for number one in your poll, Doc, Doctor Kavir. This is a head to head right. matchup. This is the Boombox Classic. Let's not let that slide by. Two uh, two other quick ones I want to say. Did everybody forget that it's Magic City Classic weekend? Also, no, we gonna get there. We're going ahead. Go ahead and start there. Go I'll, ahead. I'll, yeah, I mean it's. Alabama a and one loss. They need to get this win just to, just to make that uh, game in Mobile. And I believe that's in two weeks. I believe the game that's in Mobile right. is to make that game something. relevant. Because Jackson State win or lose, that game becomes relevant if Alabama a and wins. Because that if Jackson State loses, obviously that's going to be to control the uh, East. If Jackson State wins, that's going to be so they they can have the tiebreaker and still you know, be in control of the East. Alabama a and and last game. Arkansas Pie Bluff, first game without without the uh, head coach, Doc Gamble. Doc Gamble, yeah. It's so, and how do you open up, uh, Mr. Interim Coach? You just got to come to uh, Tallahassee where we brag better and we brag different, especially on homecoming. Jeez, Louise. Yeah, during the break, Joshua, you talked about homecoming and how many losses have taken place this year. Think about the games that are homecoming this year. This is homecoming for Delaware State. Hmm as they post North Carolina Central. The, the nerve, the nerve, the audacity. <laughs> <laughs> he 
y'all go with these homecomings, man. They, 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 hey, it happens sometimes. The schedules are rough. But I just be like, man, y'all, y'all don't play with these folks. Then you got Pablo going to FAMU with a new coach. That's FAMU's homecoming. You have Campbell going for their second consecutive HBCU experience homecoming as they go to a and what they call G Hope, the greatest homecoming on earth out there. Uh, plug that. Uh, then you have Bethune Cutman taking their far trip to Texas as they play Prairie View. Prairie View's homecoming. Mm. You got Lincoln coming all the way out from California Division II program to play Texas Southern for their homecoming. So a lot of homecomings. We'll see who gets the W, who gets the L in terms of their homecoming. Another one I want to throw out here is Alcorn traveling to Grammar. That's two straight losses for the Braves. They always have uh, trouble in Grambling. Grambling has the week off. They're looking and they're trending, playing better, more consistently. This is one to keep your eyes on in regards to can the Braves get right or Grambling get their first conference victory of the year. Fascinating to kind of watch that. All so lose, lose another game. All going lose another game. I might have to do a wellness check on uh on guest of uh, the sports rap, Kelvin Carter, see if he's gonna be all right because that'd be three in a row for uh Alcorn. So I I'm prepared to do a wellness check for you, Kelvin, if they lose another one. Exactly. You need to tell him to make sure he keeps Texas Southern off the schedule for homecoming <laughs> uh, in regards to what it is. You know, home the Texas Southern don't treat homecoming like they used to. They 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 look upset about it. Um so <laughs> I'll listen to Kevin tonight and see what he has to say because I know he's not feeling it in regards to what happened to his Braves for homecoming. Uh, it's tough in the swag. I want to go to you, Drew, for some of your last comments there in regards to any mid-major games that we need to keep eyes on. I think we talked about a little bit in terms of Tuskegee and Kentucky State in Frankfurt. That's basically for the West of the SIC for all practical purposes. Obviously, the technical things can happen depending who wins the game, but I know there's one you want to keep your eyes on. Any other one out there that we should keep our eyes on? I think you talked about teams being able to clinch, essentially. Uh, what are those other three games that people need to watch that possibly where Virginia Union, uh, Benedict, uh, Fayetteville State can potentially clinch their way into their respective conference championship games? Hey, Fayetteville State, Shaw is, is one you definitely want to keep uh, your eye on. Shaw has played themselves out of the race. They cannot win it, but they can definitely best up Fayetteville State's uh, playoff positioning. As Fayetteville State pretty much has uh, locked up the the uh, CIAA South. Virginia Union, Shawan, that's going to be one mm. interesting one to keep a uh, – uh, uh, eye on up there in uh, Richmond, Virginia. That, that Great point. Is, that's senior day for Virginia Union. So Virginia Union trying to remain undefeated in the season and in, uh, excuse me, and, and, and in Division Two. Benedict travels to no. Benedict is at home for homecoming, my brother. So Benedict has Clark at. Atlanta, a Clark Atlanta team that could be sneaky. Which Clark Atlanta team will show up? That has always been the question with them this season as they look for consistency under coach Willie Slater. But two other games I want you to keep an eye on. Neutral site matchup, Savannah State, Boy, uh, Fort Valley State in Macon, Georgia. Fort mm, Valley like needs to keep their winning ways going to set up the Fountain City Classic, not Playoff. only to be something for the playoffs, uh, for them as if Benedict wins, their chances of winning the East is over. And the other half of the Fountain City Classic is Morehouse traveling to Albany State. So that that's the other, other half of that. We want that, that Fountain City Classic may be the only mid-major game that could be significant in Week 10 if everybody handles their business. Man, I love it. Way to close. Any final statement you want to make, Josh? No, man, it's just another great, great week of HBCU football, man. Um, you know, we've had action-packed games every single week this season, um, and this week will not well, show man. any of short. This is another big-time week. So looking forward to it, man, uh, looking forward to seeing the squad. Just, you know, we got to bounce back as, as, a, as a North Carolina Central fan. But 1801 Fairwood Street rolls into Dover, Delaware for their homecoming this week. So we're looking to make a statement. Check out Joshua Sims as he continues to join us on Sundays to give you a wrap-up. 
Uh, we'll do it next week. We'll probably I'll probably be somewhere around Prairie View for homecoming to make sure we can bring you a show, give you upsets in terms of what's going on there. I'm going to find out to make sure I take care of myself so I don't get myself in trouble like B.J. Jones this week or Mike Watch or Charles Bishop. I'll find a way to make sure we can deliver the show so it won't be on me. We'll find it. Just make sure I can find some internet. We'll get it done. <laughs> With that being said, shout out to everybody there. Jimmy says, who's on HBCU Go TV this week? We certainly will let you know uh, during our Tuesday and Thursday show some of those key matchups and where they will be and where you can see them. Great point. Should be a good one. Uh, they might be traveling back down to the FAMU, if I'm not mistaken, for their that homecoming. Is, that but, is on HBCU Go, I believe. Maybe yeah, I thought so. Yes. Um, and so we will get you there. Cedric Myers is checking it out. Congratulations on the homecoming win. Jackson State, previous Houston area president, uh, big time supporter of uh, Jackson State there in terms of that Omega man as well. Won't say that too loud on the show, but uh, give me <laughs> a little love there. With that being said, uh, appreciate everybody. Joshua Sims on Wednesday on his Twitter uh, as HBCU Nightly. BJ Jones, who's a regular here. And we may have some tease out, some things in the work to get them going uh, to provide you some inside HBCU behind the scene coaching perspectives of these HBCU games. We might even try to sneak that out before the end of the season. We'll keep your eyes on that, but you can check him out now on Tuesday as he does his top two Tuesday, if you would, uh, as he gets it done, as well as catch him on the Twitter spaces that night. Uh, A.D. Drew. Uh, Brian, Brian and A.D. of the Sports Wrap. Check them out tonight as they take a deep dive in terms of HBCU Sporting World. You know you have our regular uh, Tuesday and Thursday show, as well as on Wednesday you get ONG Strike Zone in terms of what they get done. So then on Saturday, uh, we'll get it to you with Carlos Brown taking you inside of what's going on in Southern. This is a big week, and so you know he'll be delivering. Don't be surprised if he might go live taking you into Jackson for that matchup and give you some insights as they get prepared. Thank you for listening to Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Yannick Camille, the dean of HBC Sports, coming from Inside the Lab in the College HBC Sports with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop, Joshua Sims, A.D. Drew, and B.J. Jones on Sunday. Again, we want to thank you for listening to Dr. Bill's Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 o'clock. We'll tell you what happened in the lab and what games to watch out as we give you games of the week. And the latest news as well. Follow me, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. That's D-R K-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-V-I-L. That's D-R K-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-V-I-L. Inside the HBCU Sports Lab 1 on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Dream big. Continue to move forward. We will talk with you soon. Drew? Course. Lecture? Joshua? Class dismissed. Appreciate you, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.